Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and I thought it was a good time to go over meta counters. There's definitely a lot of heroes in the meta right now that are very frustrating to deal with. To name a couple, we got Tiny, Necro, DP, Huskar, and Axe. Those are going to be the heroes that we're covering today. I'm going to be listing three counters for each of these heroes. I do have an honorable mention for a few of them. And without further ado, hopefully I can help you beat these heroes in pubs. Obviously, there are some restrictions when it comes to drafting in your average pub. Naturally, as a support player, it is going to be difficult to counterpick. Sometimes you'll still be able to when your safe lane player naturally griefs because he decided that, hey, I'm not going to give the, the Legend 3 safe lane. I'm Legend 4. I deserve safe lane. So I'm going to first pick Baseless Void. Then maybe you can actually get a counterpick in. Even then, it's pretty hard because... You still don't see second phase. Either way, you do want to understand how these matchups work nonetheless, so you can apply how these heroes actually counter the other heroes, and let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below, I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. Alright, starting it off, we got Tiny at number one. This is probably the best carry of the patch. It's at least the most reliable carry I'd say of the patch. A great laning stage, scales well, it's basically always good. It's one of those heroes where you're like, hmm... When is this hero bad? And you can't think of anything. It just doesn't really have many issues. It's just always well-rounded. But there's a couple of heroes that definitely open up some weaknesses in Tiny, and so let's go over them. The first one is Necro. This is probably the most common counter pick in the pro team. If you see Tiny picked, you're likely going to see a Necro followed up. This is a hero that's not even necessarily um, very popular outside of this. Uh, we have actually been seeing it surge a bit back into the meta. I saw Alliance pick it. I've seen Tundra pick it quite a few times now. So the hero's coming back into the meta, but Necro, very simple to understand why it's good against Tiny. And let's get into it. Well, number one, Heartstop Aurora, percentage-based damage. Tiny gets like 4k HP at some point in the game. Even early game, he has like 1.8k HP, like 12 minutes in or something stupid. <laughs> He's a strength talent at level 10 that sometimes you take. So basically, Necro's Heartstopper is very, very good against Tiny. On top of that, in the laning stage, you just out-sustain Tiny. If there's any problem that Tiny does have that I would say is kind of notable, he sort of has a sustain issue in the lane, but you can kind of just deal with that by spamming Salve. So it's not the end of the world, but Necro honestly bullies most melee heroes that can't burst him. And Tiny can't really burst him. You can be annoying, and I have seen Necros die to Tiny at level 1, or, or level 2 usually is actually the main time. Um, sometimes level 3 if the Necro goes greedy and doesn't take Ghost Shroud, but the reality is, is once you have Ghost Shroud, the Tiny isn't killing you. You're gonna out-sustain him, you're gonna kick him out of land at some point, and then in the mid-game, you're one of the only heroes that can stand next to Tiny, not die to his combo, because you kind of just buy defensive items. You can buy Hood, you can just buy stats, right? Raid Drops, Wand, Fluffy Hat, if you want to go into a 4 staff. Uh, you can buy the Cloak, as we talked about, you can go Vessel for more HP so on and so on. You just buy HP in general, so there's that. And then finally, Reaper Scythe. It does damage based on missing health. That's good, because Tiny has a lot of health. Next up is Lifestealer. This is probably something you can actually apply to your games. I will say that there is a point in the game where Lifestealer actually can die to Tiny, and that's on the Shadow Blade timing, so you have to be a little bit careful. But assuming you can get over the hump where Tiny can one-shot you, or at least set up on you, Lifestealer dominates Tiny in the late game. This is a matchup where there's some point in the game where Tiny kind of just cannot man up to Lifestealer. I would say it's generally when Lifestealer gets three or four items, let's say it's something like Armlet, Halberd, Scotty, and then MKB. Usually at that point in the game, it's a really bad matchup for Tiny. Lifestealer is going to force him into a very awkward position, usually cause him to pop an early Satanic, and if you end up going Scotty on Lifestealer, if you want to go that route, you can, well, Scotty through the Satanic. You can prevent the heals really from being too effective. And so this is definitely a matchup I'm a big fan of. I think it's quite good. If there's any other carry, uh, as a bit of an honorable mention, that I think is decent against Tiny, I think CK is okay, only because the long duration stun you have can prevent the Satanic at some point of the game, and you're a hero that can chunk through his HP pool if you manage to get on top of him. Um, however, if you don't stun him, Avalanche and, and the tree grab will clear your illusion, so you've got to be careful. And finally is Winter Wyvern. 
as a support, this is one of my favorite matchups in the game. It's actually a pick we saw against the, the carry tiny at TI, uh, and it's percentage-based damage. Well, there's, there's more value than that, but it's percentage-based damage. It's a support that can naturally position well against tiny. It's very hard for Wyvern to die to Shadowblade Tiny. It can die to Blink Tiny, so I think Tiny can itemize in that way against Wyvern. But the thing about Shadowblade Tiny is it's like, it's a little bit hard to get on certain supports, especially the mobile ones. And Wyvern, if he's good, if you're a good Wyvern player, you can play near hills and near tree lines with a sentry. And if you hit the Tiny once with your Q, it does like a thousand damage to him. I'm not kidding. If the, if the Tiny has like three, four K HP, it will do that much damage to him, right? It's insane, right? So right then and there, you just have a hero, a support, that with a click of a button can enable your team to actually kill off a tiny. On top of that, the heal is quite good against tiny. If someone gets Shadowbladed comboed and they're getting ripped into, you can often heal and kite out the initiation from tiny. And finally, Winter's Curse, it's good against most carries, so I'm not gonna hype it like, oh, this is the tiny counter. It's not like particularly good against tiny, but at the end of the day, if you if you curse someone next to tiny, he will kill them. All right, next up, let's talk about Necrophos. This is a hero that, yes, is starting to pop into the meta, especially in pubs. This is a pub dominator for sure. Let's go over a couple of counters. Number one is Batrider. My God, is this matchup brutal. Oh my God. In the early game, there is no way to live against Batrider as Necro. You can try to itemize around it with like a Lotus or a Yules, but even then, you can dispel the sticky wants, but he's just gonna reapply it and continue to run you down. It's not like his HP pool is low, so Heartstopper does anything. Ghost Shroud is worthless. Batrider rushes BKB, so you can't even ulti him most of the time. This matchup sucks. Next up is Leshrac. Kind of similar to Batrider, you don't really have much of an answer to him, and it's a BKB rushing heavy magic damage hero that can easily kill you no matter how far ahead you are. And that's gonna be the big thing, Necro will win lane, and if you don't have a hero that directly addresses him, it can be almost impossible to kill him. Leshrac, even if Leshrac is like a thousand or two thousand net worth behind the Necro, he can still kill the Necro. And so, yeah, it kind of just counters it. Next up is Medusa. This is a hero I really like to pick in lane against Necro. Necro can do okay against Medusa if you manage to get the lane back and have some support that can close the distance, but in general, how I see it play out is that the Medusa can click the Necro because of the attack range advantage. Medusa has much better attack range. Medusa can kind of just like snake the Necro if he kind of runs at him and then you continue to auto him. So like you sort of just auto the Necro a lot and then it's hard for him to really fight back or chip you down because you have a lot of HP. So Scythe doesn't really kill Medusa. Your E doesn't really kill Medusa. Ghost Shroud's fine, but Medusa also rushes Scotty in a lot of games. And that's a big problem for Necro, right? You basically can't move. Your healing goes down the drain. And so this matchup for me is a very good one. This is a carry you can pick into Necro if you happen to have last pick. And, and it feels quite good to me. And finally, this massage as an honorable mention. Basically, the, uh, the how your Gravekeeper's Cloak works is a hard counter to Necro. Like, he just doesn't really do damage to you. His ulti can get reduced. Uh, and every Q gets reduced. So basically, Necro does zero damage to Visage. <laughs> and then the birds actually can clap Necro. You might be like, oh, but he has Ghost Shroud. Yeah, but the thing is, ne Visage kind of just has like infinite chase to some extent. And then when he does Ghost Shroud, you can soul assumption him and it does a lot of damage in the early. It's a big problem before the hood timing on Necro if he even goes that. Uh, so yeah, Visage is pretty cool. Next up is Death Prophet. This is a hero you're not going to see too much in your average pub, but the fact that it has a 50% win rate and it's a hero that I think is like difficult to play and a bit clunky for the average player. Um, the winner being 50%, in my opinion, definitely means it's very good if you spend the time to get good at it. So let's talk about how to counter it. Number one is CK. This is my probably my favorite matchup. Um, well, I should say my least favorite matchup because usually I'm playing the DP. Uh, I'm a big DP player myself. You know, I'm, I'm scum. I, I understand. But the thing is, CK is good for a couple of reasons. DP's armor is mediocre. Just all throughout the game, it's mediocre. In the lane, I think it's four starting, uh, which is actually not bad. Uh, it's it's not terrible. But the thing is, CK can drop her down to like one armor or, or zero armor, and then he can actually kill her. The thing is, a lot of heroes will go on the DP and she'll kind of just spirit siphon them and it won't be favorable. CK does too much damage. It's that simple. At level two, if you take your pull and your stun, which you should, as long as you have like a stick or a mango, and you have enough mana to consistently do this, you'll, you'll kill her. Like, I've played this matchup quite a few times. 
As long as you stun them and pull them when the position five is in position, you're going to do too much to the DP. It's just how it goes. Like, I've seen this matchup a couple times now. It's just how it goes. And so in the mid game as well, you also have a way to burst her. Generally, DP's first few items are either uh, BKB, Yules, or like Kaya Sanj. None of these items give you armor. And so the big problem here is that if you don't get your Yules off or your BKB off before the stun, you can just get one shot. Like, you can just get one shot. You buy phase boots for armor, but that's it. And so your armor is like 9 or 10. And it can be a big issue for DP. So I'm a huge fan of that matchup. Next up is Medusa. This is a hero that just buys Scotty. Yes, DP can beat Medusa in lane. And yes, if the Medusa doesn't hit a good Scotty timing, the DP can get on top of the Medusa and shred her. So be a little bit careful about this matchup. DP can actually counter Medusa depending on the circumstances. However, in the lane, if you can keep your distance, the average DP player isn't good enough to really like abuse Spirit Siphon hard enough to kill you. And then if you can avoid DP's level six bike by heading into the jungle when that's coming up, then you, you can be very good against this hero. Your Scotty timing is the key here. Just try to really get there. And finally is Marana. This is kind of a cool one, but I really like this matchup for a couple reasons. Number one, you have a way to get away from Spirit Siphon. That's nice. One of the first items Marana is generally going to rush is Spirit Vessel. That's obviously a very hard counter to the Spirit Siphons. So I love that as well. And finally, one thing that DP really doesn't like is hard stuns. In general, getting chain stun is kind of a problem for DP because she's one of those heroes where if you like semi commit on her, she's basically always going to win the engagement because she'll turn it around. If you only do half of her health, it's not like it's good because you chipped her a bit. She's just going to turn on you, right? She's going to heal through it. However, if you Sand King stun her into an arrow and she dies from full, well, you know, no hero likes dying from full, but she rushes BKB and Yules. These, these items, you know, yes, against Chain Stun, she can go like Akaya Sanj, which is why this hero is good. She has options. But the thing is, it is really nice to have that hard stun to at least force her to buy something like Assange, which she doesn't always want to buy. And so, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Marana. It's just like good overall, a solid matchup. Next up is Huskar. Huskar, man, this hero getting last pick Huskar right now is so sad. If you're like a tight end draw lane and some guy picks like last pick Huskar, ugh, God. Ugh, it's so gross. It's it's nasty. It, it really is nasty. But all right, let, let's talk about it. So the first one, I have to put it, it's it's so simple. It's AA. If there's any matchup, it's like most counter matchups in Dota are like pretty playable, right? Most of the time you can like play the game. It's usually like even people are like, oh, you know, like feel against Earthshaker. Like it's not even that bad, right? It's not. Huskar AA is unplayable. It, it, it just is. You can't play the game. And don't tell me, oh, but Speed, I have a I have a Sanjin Yasha heart build on Huskar that's actually a coward at AA because I'm on full HP. It's like, oh, okay. You're going to sit on full HP? Really? Does that work? You know how your passive works? No. Okay. Next up is Necro. Even though he does have magic resist now, Huskar just sits at too low of an HP where the magic resist isn't going to save him from Scythe. So, yeah. And Ghost Shroud keeps you live. Next up is Axe. Honestly, Axe Blade Mail is just usually good enough. A Blink Blade Mail call is usually good enough to kill Huskar. Because the Blade Mail reflects physical damage, which goes through the passive, right? The magic resist, um, spin is pure, and then your ulti does damage based on, like, you know, like, if they're at a certain HP range, it just kills them. It doesn't, there's no resistances, right? And so, yeah, it's one of those matchups where the damage types just really are in Axe's favor. And on top of that, it's something that goes through BKB as well. Huskar's pretty reliant on his BKB timing. And so, yeah, if, if you can hit your timings on, on Axe, you can get your Blink Blade Mail and then into a BKB, you're going to reliably be able to deal with the Huskar. And so that's definitely a solid matchup. The lane can be hard, though. So you just got to be careful about the lane. That's all. SD. Basically, SD has three breaks when he gets Axe. So, yeah. On top of that, one thing about SD as well is the copies you can make of Huskar if you put them under are actually really, really strong. And often Huskar will die to that. And finally, last but not least, let's talk about Axe. Can you guys believe that Axe is the highest winner hero on Dota buff right now? It's actually kind of crazy to me. I, I, I genuinely cannot believe it. Why? Because I don't know why he's the highest winner hero. I don't think the buffs or changes he got were even buffs or that good. So I don't know why he's that high of a win rate. If you guys know, if there's some bug or maybe it's the shard is good. Axe's shard is pretty cool. At the end of the day, I don't know why he's so high, but let's talk about it because maybe he's going to be the upcoming meta hero. Number one is Tiny. This is a hero that just does not lose lane to Axe, right? Axe can't really chase him down. You can always toss the Axe away. 
even Blink Blade Mail isn't really that good against Tiny because Tiny doesn't really like, he doesn't do damage in that way. You know, he has a very high HP pool, but he generally kills people by like kind of nuking them and then hitting them like four or five times. Axe just, you're not, the Blade Mail isn't going to do that much to the Tiny is, is really how it is. On top of that, Tiny has a status resist talent. So Call is not good. Call is countered by status resist. Call is also countered, and Blade Mail is also countered by Lifesteal. Tiny loves buying Satanic, it's usually his third or fourth item. So basically everything about Tiny is just kind of solid against Axe, even Avalanche is a big problem. If you blink in and you get Avalanche, it's, it's an issue. Toss is an instant disable against Call, Avalanche is an instant disable against Call. So there's like multiple ways to prevent the blink Call. Uh, so it, it's just bad. Like I've seen this matchup a couple times, it, it doesn't really go well for Axe most of the time. Next up is Venno. Um, if you, you're usually not going to be in the lane of the Axe. I guess you could be. You could even pick it as a support. It's pretty good, even as a support against Axe. The thing here is that having a hero that can cancel blinks is really good against Axe, as is. The Plague Wards make it miserable for Axe to blink in. So that's one thing, right? The vision game of Venno against any blink initiator is, is good. So there's that. Then you rush Spirit Vessel like most games as Venno. This is very good against the high HP pool of Axe. It kind of just shreds him. And then Axe can't really call you, you know, like <laughs> you can buy a Yules. If you see him coming, you can pre yules him. You can Yules yourself. You can go Kaya Sanj to get the status resistance against the call. Blade Mail doesn't do shit because you're all tick damage. So it's like a miserable matchup. Axe does not want to buy a pipe as a core. You might be like, well, but Speed, I buy pipe on Axe. Yeah, that's why you're 3K, bro. I hate to break it to you. It's Axe needs a BKB. And a four staff. He needs to be able to engage and disengage. He's not like some frontline core. It's just not what he does. His kit doesn't really allow him to build that way. And so, yeah, Venno just, just, just it just destroys him. It's a horrendous matchup. There's nothing good about it. Like, <laughs> there's nothing in that matchup that goes Axe's way. It's just, it's just bad. Next up is Necro. It's kind of the same thing as Venno here. Call doesn't do anything. Blade Mail doesn't do anything. You can't. At least you don't get your blink canceled. But like. <laughs> Once again, you can buy a Yule, so you counter the Blade Mail call against Axe, you can save your teammates. You can go Forest Staff to save your teammates. You know, <laughs> your E does a lot of damage to him because it's percentage-based damage, so it's Scythe. It's basically the same thing as Venno, just without a Blink Castle, which is why I'd say Venno's a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, both these Smash Bros. are just bad for Axe. And finally, is Undying! This is one that beats Axe in lane, so Decay kind of just allows you to clap the Axe in lane. You know, a Strength Hero Decay. Axe loses damage, you just run him down. Spin isn't good enough at level 1. Battle, Battle Hunger is actually a decent answer to Undying. I will say, something like Skyrath Axe can kind of deal with Undying a little. You're not going to have a good lane, but you'll do alright. Uh, but the big thing here is the Tombstone and the Flesh Golem. It's one of those supports where if you call him, you're not going to kill him. You know what I mean? If the Undying gets off Flesh Golem, he sees you coming. It's a great response, right? You, let's say you see an Axe coming, you click Flesh Golem, it's like, alright, if he calls you and you have like 1800 HP, 2k HP, he's not going to be able to kill you alone. Axe doesn't kill people like that, right? That's not how it works. Even if he calls you in a creep wave, he's probably not going to be able to call you. Then when he calls you, you hit him. Flesh Golem, <laughs> that's how your ulti works, is good when you hit people. So like this matchup just inherently is shit for Axe because <laughs> like he forces you to hit him and you want to hit him. And then Axe blinks in, you call the Undying, he hits you, you can't move. Then he tombstones, you can't move. What did I say earlier about Axe? You need to be able to disengage. You're not going to be able to disengage and get off two sets of calls. So, yeah, this matchup is just hot trash. It's not a good lane. The mid game's bad. The tombstone zombies cancel your blink if you're not careful, especially in the night time. And so, yeah, this matchup is also horrendous. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.